Mandy Samaya is a pioneer in the judicial field, a woman of first. She was one of the first women judges on the Eastern Cape High Court, the first black woman on the Supreme Court of Appeal, the first woman deputy president, and later the first woman president of the SCA. And if appointed as the next Chief Justice of the country, she will be yet again the first woman. Justice Maya was born in 1964 in rural Eastern Cape. The trailblazer worked as a court interpreter and a prosecutor before joining the Women's Legal Defense in Washington, D.C. As the country moved into democracy, Maya worked as an investigator for the Independent Electoral Commission. She then practiced as an advocate before becoming a high court judge. At the helm of the Supreme Court of Appeal, she's turned the appellate court into one of the most efficient in the country, which some in the legal fraternity feels makes her the best candidate for the next Chief Justice position. Justice Maya is set to be the second candidate to be interviewed by the Judicial Services Commission, which is set to be chaired by the Deputy Judge President of the SCA, Gola Petze, in the first week of February. Hasina Gori, SABC News, Johannesburg. Let's speak then to Hasina, who's been watching these interviews very closely for us now. Hasina, of course, you call her a woman of firsts, but there's still one more hurdle. We don't know if she's going to indeed be the country's uh, chief justice. Yes, good evening, Bongiwe. Quite a long week and an unprecedented uh, Chief Justice interview. As you heard, Advocate uh, Dalim Pofu there reiterating that this was the first time ever in democratic South Africa that the president nominated more than one candidate for this position. Just to remind you that the Chief Justice not only sits as the most senior judge in the Apex Court, that's a constitutional court, but also is the head of the judiciary who has the final authority on the the maintenance as well as the execution of all the courts. So in essence, someone who has really a great role, not only on judicial skills, but also leadership as well as management. So we saw those marathon interviews quite rigorous through the week, uh, some of them being quite harsh at some time, sometimes probing. There were moments that have made some legal analysts and, and as well as advocacy groups uh, concerned over the manner in which the candidates were interviewed, but the four top jurors spent at least a minimum of seven to eight hours on the uh, hot seat answering questions with regards to some of their judgments, their thoughts, their ideas, as well as their vision should they be appointed to uh, Chief Justice. And uh, as I mentioned in that package that we just heard, that the Supreme Court President, Mandisa Maya, was really a pioneer, a woman of first, mm. but also a woman that believed in transformation. Mm. When she answered in 2007, when she was interviewed for that Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, and she was asked a question around transformation, and one of the things she said, and, and it was quite important that she's been answering this question from the very first time she ever interviewed for her position as a judge. And there isn't any shortage of a female, um, you know, legal uh, scholars as mm. well as lawyers and attorneys that could be judges. And she was calling for more of them to be used as well in the private and public sector. But mm. there was a question throughout uh, the four days of the interview that really touched on uh, transformation and we saw that question being put to many um, of the candidates on whether or not the country was ready for a female chief justice and Mandisa Maya's uh, response uh, you know to that question is very telling she mm. says that it's not about being a woman she's not good because she's a woman judge she's good because she's a judge it just so happens that she's woman and she's really been calling on the commissioners to not look at her as a woman and give her the position or nominate her because of that but to nominate her because of her merit because of her work and and, and to judge her accordingly and uh, that is what it's going to be uh, yet to be seen we try to ask the advocate uh, uh, you know Mbofu on you know, take us in the confidence and what led to her nomination but however they didn't want to indulge us in uh, going into those uh, closed meetings and what led to her being nominated uh, but it's going to be interesting as you've reiterated quite a few times that uh, this is not the final step this is one more or two more if the president
president has not yet consulted with the National Assembly, that's where he would have to go next, get mm. recommendations from them. But that final decision always lies with the president. He has that according to the constitution. He is given that power and privilege to make his own determination. And it's going to be interesting to see if he follows what the JSC uh, says or follows his own uh, discretion and his own uh, you know, a decision around who should lead the judiciary. All right, uh, uh, Hasina, it's also going to be interesting to see, in fact, if she actually does uh, become the Chief Justice, how that work will continue, because there was also that question around her, uh, you know, her merging with some of the colleagues in the court, because she hasn't even been a permanent judge there, but saying that she's, you know, quite used to some of the colleagues and some of them served under her in the Supreme Court of Appeal. So it's going to be quite an interesting road ahead. And of course, get some well-deserved rest. It's been a long week. Thank you so much. That's Hasina Gori.